So last time we made the base of our cover. Next we're going to do our reinforcement and we're going to do our hinge. Okay. So the reinforcement, very straightforward. I actually have a scrap here that we're going to cut it from. So our, apparently I don't have a ruler here anywhere. There it is. It's clear, so I can't see it. So basically, for our reinforcement piece, we want it to be about half an inch bigger than our center section. Okay? So you'll remember the cardstock for our spine was four and a half. Okay? So I'm going to cut this to five and a half inches wide. And then we want it one eighth of an inch smaller than the height. So this is seven and a half. So we're going to go seven and three eighths. So if you're looking at your ruler, seven inches, seven and a quarter, seven and a half. The lighter line in between the half and the quarter is your three eighths inch line. Okay. It's going to be the same on your paper trimmer. So there's, so for instance, there's two inches two and a quarter. This line right here is two and one eighth. On your paper trimmer, the little short line in between the eighth and then the whole measurement is your sixteenth. We don't use that super often, but it's good to know how to do that. So I am going to cut this to five and a half by seven and three eighths. Okay. I'm going to cover the entire back side of this with score tape. Now, could you glue it? You could. However, the way this is going to go down, if you're gluing it, you're going to run the risk of it bubbling. Not to mention you're going to have to use a fair amount of glue and you're going to have to give it time to dry before you can move on to your next step. Um, doing score tape on this just covers it and you're done. Okay, so I am using my roll for this and I'm just lining it up and then I'll use my craft knife to trim that off. Ooh, and I am at the end of this roll. Oh my gosh. I thought I was getting close, but who knew, right? Okay, so I'm going to throw that away. I've got a little section there that we didn't get. So I will get that with some other tape. Um, no, I think I need the half inch. Okay, so this is half inch. I have score tape in like a thousand different sizes. You have no idea. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to fill in that middle piece there, and then I'm going to fill in this bottom corner. And I am kind of laying that over the end of this just a little bit. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. So before I take this off, I'm going to hold this over, which is called dry fitting. So when I say we're going to dry fit something is we're just going to kind of lay it where it's going to go and make sure it lines up the way we want it to. Okay, so this is coming out about half an inch on either side of the wings of our spine. And then when it's on here all the way, we've got just about a sixteenth of an inch top and bottom. Okay. So we're going to be careful putting this down again because, you know, it is score tape. You don't want to put it down and have it like stick where you don't want it to. <laughs> wouldn't normally do, but that's okay. Um, you can do partial removal, line it up, and then pull off the rest. I'm going to do it just in one shot, so I'm going to get all of my backing off here. If you're new to this and you're not comfortable doing it, you can absolutely do it the way we have done um, when we were putting the covers 
together. Okay, so I like to turn it sideways so that I can see my side to side or my top to bottom that is. Okay, so I'm gonna line it up and drop it down. And then we're just gonna burnish that down. Okay, I'm gonna bend. And again, if you've got the super pointy bone folder, you're gonna be, wanna be really careful. But we're just gonna push that cardstock down into that groove, okay? And then I'm gonna turn it the other way and do it again. Okay, close it up. And then I always will stand it up on its edge like this and just kind of crunch it. Okay, not hard, but just enough to really get those pushed down in, okay? So there's the completed cover, all right? So let's talk about our hinge. So our hinge is gonna be seven inches by four inches, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece down to seven by four. Now, you're probably wondering, how did I come up with that? Okay, when I am measuring out my hinges, or figuring out the measurements for my hinges, I literally will kind of draw it out. So I'm gonna go, okay, I need half an inch and half an inch for my page to attach to. And then I need a half inch gusset. The gusset is the space between the actual hinges that stand up that your page is attached to. Okay, then I need another half an inch and half an inch and another gusset. Another half inch and a half inch. Okay, so I've got half inch, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. Okay, because this is a very small, very simple album, we're only doing three pages. That's how I came up with the measurements for my spine. If you were doing bigger, you would just continue on. You would go, okay, half inch. So if I was doing a really big, big book with six pages, it would be half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. The other piece that drawing it out like this helps you with is figuring out your spine width. Because typically when you're designing a book from scratch and not following a tutorial, you need to know how big your spine's gonna be, okay? There are lots of different ways people do this. There are a lot of people that will go, okay, I'm gonna have five pages in this book and they will build their pages and mat them and decorate them, get them all done and then stack them up and stand their ruler up next to it and go, oh, this is three inches high, I need a three and a half inch spine. I have not had good luck with having fully decorated and embellished and chunky pages and trying to put them in a book after they're in that state. I would much rather build them, put, you know, make my page base and put it in the book add my flaps, pockets, belly bands, shakers, whatever it is, whatever elements I'm putting on those pages and put those on and then mat. It can be a little tricky depending on your page designs and whatnot to do that while they're in the book. The most I have ever done outside the book is mat, like assemble and mat the pages. I do not get into all the chunky embellishments and whatnot because in my experience, most of the time that half inch gusset is more than enough space between the pages, okay? That being said, you can increase and decrease by whatever, however much you think you need to. If you think your, um, the piece that's gonna come up that your page is going to attach to needs to be longer because your pages are gonna be heavy, then by all means make it longer. I've done it with 5 eighths of an inch tall, um, 
hinge pieces I've done it with I think that's probably the tallest I've gone. I've gone shorter in some cases when it's something really tiny and light and I don't want a lot of bulk but you can't you know most of the time half inch for your hinge and half inch for your gussets is going to be more than enough space okay so for ours like I said we it's going to be the four inches because it's three pages okay so that's the four inches the reason I came up with the width of the spine is if you just count half inch for each one of your gussets you can come up with how wide your hinge is going to be when it's put together and then you can from that determine how big your spine needs to be so in this case I had two gussets so the finished spine size will be one inch I'm going to add a quarter inch on each side so that's how we came up with a one and a half inch spine okay if I were doing bigger like my example here where we figured we needed an eight and a half inch piece of paper to do our spine in this case it's going to be half one one and a half two two and a half two and a half inches so in this case I would go a three inch spine I might go three and a half if I'm doing like you know accordion pockets or something you know bulkier on the front and back inside covers um but that's that's again it's a personal preference it's in how you're designing your album but that's the easiest way I found to do my hinges and calculate my hinges is doing it this way okay so we have our spine uh seven inches by four inches I'm going to get my scoreboard and this is another weird little thing that I have picked up it doesn't work for everybody I know a lot of people that just think I'm nuts for doing it this way and a lot of people you know will try and go oh my gosh this was so much easier I don't typically score like this and that's why because I'm holding my paper still so that it doesn't move while I'm scoring and I'm having to reach across my arm and my hand to score I hate doing it that way if I turn it sideways I can hold this down and very easily score my paper okay so that's how I'm gonna how why my board's gonna be turned sideways just so you understand what I'm doing so we're gonna put the four inch side at the top of the scoreboard which the way I have mine oriented is gonna be the side it's still the top of the scoreboard okay we are gonna score every half inch okay so half inch one inch one and a half two inches two and a half inches three inches and three and a half inches okay so there you go that's the base of our hinge move this out of the way and what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna get my glue you can do it with tape I don't recommend it it makes your hinges really really stiff and really bulky you can do it with tape I've been using glue for this for I don't know how long okay I'm gonna fold over my first I am gonna burnish starting in the middle and I'm gonna burnish out okay fold it back just a little bit and again we don't want to get too carried away with the glue put my glue down I'm gonna start again in the middle and burnish out and then back down and again even though I didn't use a ton of glue I still have glue kind of coming out the ends that's just what happens so I always have um, paper towel or something on hand okay so there's our first hinge we're gonna skip this next space in fact let me do it this way glue glue no glue glue no okay that might be a little bit more helpful okay so we're gonna skip this one we're gonna go to these two and again I'm gonna fold start in the middle and go back and forth 
I know the hinges are the part that pretty much everybody has the worst time with. I still end up with hinges that aren't quite right that I have ripped out of books and thrown away or that I've gotten them all glued together and I look at it and go that didn't line up right and I throw them away. You know, it's just one of the trickier parts to making mini albums, which is why I do a lot of folios because there's no hinges. <laughs> okay. So give that a second to set up. Okay. And we're going to fold back. Okay. And again, you're going to start in the middle when you're burnishing that down. Okay. I'm going to turn it back this way and fold this up from this side and over itself. Burnish again and do the same thing on the end. We're going to burnish it down. Let's see, and I can tell already, I think I've screwed up my hinge. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm okay. Okay, there's your first two hinge pieces. Okay, so we've got an X and an X. We're going to go to our last end, our last piece. And again, we're going to start in the middle, burnish out. Okay, and again with the glue. over and burnish it down. Flip it back the other way and fold it up and over and burnish it again. And there is your hinge. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get our hinge into our book. Um, a lot of times, and I don't do this with every project and I'm not going to do it here, but you can mat this piece here and then put your spine on top of it. I'm not going to do that just for simplicity's sake because we will do matting like on a separate video. But all I'm going to do is take and put glue on the back of the hinge that we made last time. And then I'm going to center it. Now, I have done enough of these over the years that I usually can eyeball it and get it pretty much where I want it. That is not always the case. If you're not sure you're going to be able to center it up, that's where the centering ruler comes in because you can take and find the center on your spine. And I am pretty much spot on. <laughs> and mark where your center is that way. And then do the same thing going the other direction. Which is going to be about there. And I'm pretty much dead center there as well. And just mark and then use those guides to line up your spine. Okay. So we've got our, our I'm sorry, hinge, hinge, spine. Hinge. This is these little pieces. Okay, I'm going to set this aside because next we're going to do our pages. So the page style we're going to do is probably the simplest one you can do. We are going to cut three pieces that are seven inches by ten inches. Three pieces of cardstock. So I'm going to cut the seven inch side first because this five inch scrap would be a, will be a good one to use when we start doing flaps and things. So seven inches by 10 inches. And as I'm making books, I try to keep my scraps kind of all in a little stack and try to keep them kind of organized by size. Because if you keep good track of them and keep them organized, you'll find a lot of times when you go to put in flaps or photo mats or tags or inserts that you can go to that little scrap pile and very easily find a piece that'll work without having to cut into another sheet of cardstock. 
In fact, most of my albums, I try to design them so that once you've done the base construction and you're getting to the flaps and pockets and the other elements, that I'm pulling from those scraps just to save everybody involved on cardstock. Okay, so three pieces, seven by 10. We are gonna score these in half. So I'm gonna grab my scoreboard, and again, like I explained earlier, I do use mine sideways because I have a better and easier time doing so. So, you're gonna put your 10 inch side at the top of your scoreboard, okay? We are gonna score this at five inches, so in half, okay? All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the other two. So 10 inch at the top of the scoreboard. I'm gonna have to clean this off. This is like super sticky. Of course, this is the newer one. My older one, I was having an issue with, so I ended up replacing it. And I'm thinking they've changed something on this so it's not so slippery, which is awesome. Okay. All right, so folding scored paper. So when you look at this, you'll see this is the little groove where we scored it. If you turn it over, you see the other side has a bump. Typically, when you're folding the scored paper like that, you're gonna fold towards the bump, okay? So I'm gonna fold and burnish. There's one page. Same thing again, flip it over, fold towards the bump, and burnish. One more time, fold it over towards the bump. Oh, I totally scored that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> um, yeah, by like a whole half inch. You know what, that's okay, we'll just cut another one. Which I could just rescore it, but it will bother me, so <laughs> we're just gonna cut another one, it's okay. It happens from time to time. This time I'm gonna make sure we are all the way over. So I'm sure I'm gonna watch this, like play this back and watch it and go, oh, there's where I screwed it up. Okay. All right. All right, so we have our three pages. Now we are gonna go ahead and put them in our book. So I'm gonna come in here with my bone folder and I'm just gonna work my hinges. And I'm gonna fold them back the other way. And again. And I'm just gonna go back and forth and do this a few times. You can do this before you put this in the book as well. You don't have to wait until it's actually in your book to do this because you want those hinges to loosen up so that they turn easily once the pages are attached. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. You're gonna open this up. You're gonna push it in against the side of your page and fold this down, okay? It should run from edge to edge on your hinge, okay? put glue on the hinge itself. I'm gonna fold this over, fold that down, and then I am gonna just pull it out about a sixteenth of an inch, okay? So it's not all the way to that crease, okay? Because you'll see there's just a tiny bit of that hinge on that outside. That's what you want. <clears throat> if you go fully to the bottom of that hinge, sometimes it can make your pages not want to turn and you don't want to, you don't want to keep that, you don't want to keep it from turning. I know what I'm trying to say. Okay, got one side glued down. We're going to put glue along the bottom and on the other side of the hinge. Now, 
we are going to do some inserts. So this is another one of those places where you can kind of adjust this. So say you've got your seven inch tall pocket, but you only want four inch tall inserts. You could go ahead and do glue halfway up and then any insert you go, you any insert you do, I cannot talk today, I'm so sorry, is only gonna go down as far as that glue goes, okay? So you can always adjust the depth of your pockets by where you glue, you know, you wanna glue on the bottom, of course, but you can always add another line of glue to adjust the depth, okay? So then we're just gonna fold that over and burnish it down. There we go, there is our first pocket or pocket page. I'm telling you, I shouldn't be doing this today. I should have continued to play Mario Kart. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the same thing again. I am gonna use the page before it to line it up side to side here from the angle that I'm looking at. So technically, I guess, top to bottom. And then again, especially since it just slid on me. I'm gonna pull it back just a touch. Okay, and then again. down, fold that down, and then pull back about a sixteenth of an inch. You could go up to an eighth of an inch, I wouldn't go any further than that because you still want to have enough of that hinge in there for the page to grab onto. sealed down and shut. Okay, so there is our little book with our first, with our three pages. Okay, next time we are going to work on flaps. Flaps are not hard. I'm just going to show you a different, you know, a couple of different configurations and how to put them into your book.